So greetings and salutations. Welcome to this edition of the Women of BSV. Today we've got host Casey, Roof, and myself Diddy and we are joined by Patrick Prince who is the Managing Director of the Bitcoin Association who are currently based in Switzerland. So welcome to the show Patrick and thank you very much for agreeing to come on and join us. Thank you for having me. Didi Ruth, Casey, big fan of your show. I'm really happy to be on. <laughs> I'm so amazed that you watch our show. It's actually brilliant. <laughs> oh, many do. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you. So, go on, Ruth. You seem I was to have. Say, we generally start with asking people how they found their way to Bitcoin. So, did you stumble into the Bitcoin Association by having been in Bitcoin for years and years, or, or are you new to it, or what, what happened? Yeah. I think I have a history that is has really t two stories. Um, w one is um, the, the very traditional one of someone working in the financial industry. I structured wealth for ultra high net worth people. And um, so I was working at a hedge fund group and they are uh, getting, they got a lot of uh, requests to, you know, start looking into digital assets. And uh, back then we considered ourselves uh, experts in what we uh, uh, advised our clients on. But we had very little expertise in digital assets and blockchain in general. And so we built a little task force. And in contrast to what other hedge funds do, just build a multi-token exposure, we actually started testing the technology. And I think that's the single biggest differentiator and why I, uh, I kind of uh, learned quite a bit very early on. Because I see a lot of false labeling and I see a lot of, um, let's say, a promotion that is not really uh, turning true when uh, right. you start uh, using right. it, right? You would yeah. ride the car before you buy it, but people right now, they just go to the showroom and look at it, and then they hope that some other fool comes around and also just buys it from the showroom. And, um, you know, that has been a good experience. I learned very quickly that uh, high transaction volume, low transaction fees enable innovation, and that uh, intrigued me. And so in, uh, I was in several coin geeks as well. Um, I attended in general. A uh, wide range of conferences, but it was CoinGeek that uh, surprised me because I met a lot of business people, and that's where I come from. Uh, that's uh, you know I'm interested in innovation, uh, and uh, I decided in 2018, 19 to spend more time on it. And mm -hmm. uh, by 2020, the legal entity was set up in Switzerland for the association, and they asked me to come on board uh, because I've in the past structured you know companies i've built companies there's a lot of operational work to do right now i can speak a bit more to this later um and i've done this for about uh, one and a half years and then i was asked to step up and come on you know join us as managing director um kind of taking the ba now towards a bit of a new road and uh, i think it's an exciting one well in that case tell us what is the remit of the bitcoin association mm, yeah i was going to say yeah, so I think, you know, I've observed for very long from outside, then from inside. And I feel in the last couple of years, we have become somewhat of a sales and event agency. And that's not the mandate of an association. Um, so I revisited how we go about many things. And there's still a lot of work in process. But um, um, I think there's really two mandates that we have. One is uh, owning the technical roadmap and ensuring that Bitcoin kind of uh, fulfills its full potential. And the second thing is um, ecosystem, nurturing a healthy, diverse ecosystem that attracts the builders, the entrepreneurs, the creatives, those who can really test the boundaries of the ecosystem, uh, of, the, of the technology, sorry. And um, this was also restricted somewhat in the past. Okay. So that's the mandate. How do you plan, what direction do you want to take it in? Yeah, so we have built several new teams and we have um, also put in place certain tools which I think make the make it much easier to join um, the BZ ecosystem. Um, you know, we learned a lot also from other protocols, right? I think we did not a good job in nurturing an ecosystem in the past. Um, we're very focused on enterprise, but enterprise really means that we see with the example of fixed gaming, every company, fixed gaming is a small company, but they're testing the boundaries and they do more transactions than some other blockchains could actually generate. So what is really enterprise? Anyone needs a scalable infrastructure. And so I think people were a bit misled that we only care about large organizations. That's not the case. Um, we care about enterprise great capabilities of the infrastructure. Um, so yeah, and um, 
I feel we left out a bit or, or, or kind of didn't really stimulate the, the very creative ones. And if you look at the ecosystem today, uh, the backbone of it is small companies. It's one, two, I don't know, five people startups often that are pushing the boundaries. It's not national banks, governments, or I don't know, big enterprise that are leading the innovation path, right? It's, it's really small ones. So and um, it's the same for pretty much every economy, every Western economy at least, right? And so I want to pay much more attention to those um, uh, creative ones, the innovators, and also allocate them the resources. We are an ecosystem association. Those who demonstrate proof of work get our resources going forward. And we're already starting to implement this um, across different of our next like, various of our um, tasks and uh, teams that we have. We have an education team, as you know, we have a technical standard committee. We have now an engineering team. We've just hired um, an uh, ecosystem um, kind of lead to, um, to, to, to foster the building of a healthy ecosystem. We have uh, built a Discord, as you know, we have built a developers forum. We have brought or revived Bitcoin as we don't come. We try to demonstrate, whether well, as demos, right, uh, the, the, the superpowers of BSV um, with the NFTs that we sponsor to bring on chain, the, the data on chain examples. Um, we have tried to also bring information together. It shouldn't be hard to start building. But the reality is, you know, in the past, we went to shows, I don't know, family office events as a nonprofit protocol association. And even if someone came along and said, well, it's fantastic, how can I start? It's pretty hard. There's not enough workers and there's not enough tools. So we went out together with you know, a couple of uh, new team members that you might have never heard of. One is uh, Marcin Zarkovsky, he's the chief of staff of BNL, the general counsel, an excellent guy. We did really the groundwork. We analyzed what is missing. We talked to people inside, but also outside the ecosystem. What keeps you from joining BSV, right? And you know, I think um, reputational concern is really a, a bit of an excuse for us as well. We also just didn't make it easy. Mm -hmm. And um, that's um, that's a key focus now. Um, this is so the music players. Let me stop you because this is fantastic. Isn't it? I think it's obvious. It's so obvious. It's also, it's it's so also, obvious. And I'm like, right? I, I imagine there's like various small startups in BS at the minute, like sitting here cheering because that's exactly what I want to hear. I mean, there isn't anything much that I would um, look up to Solana for except that they seem to know how to nurture small businesses. Yes, I agree. Right? Absolutely. They're kind of getting everything else wrong, but if they get that one thing right, they can... And here's the funny part. Ruth, if you, if you talk to large enterprises, the first thing they say is, well, you know, how many developers are there? What's the activity level, right? So they want to look at the Discord and see, wow, it's really vibrant. And if you don't have that, they will never even consider your blockchain. Yeah. So... I'm telling people we have to go back and do grassroots work. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a completely different way of working, isn't it? Actually, you know, you say about the Discord. I mean, this is something that 20 years ago would never be anything that you would even consider. But now, like you say, people want to know that they can speak to genuine people and there is conversation flowing around there. And these, I, I know Discord is quite popular with a, quite a lot of um projects are in the BSV system, but it does seem to be, like you say, something that does seem to happen quite a lot with other in, um, industries as well. So it's just a, a kind of sign of the times that this is what people want. They do actually want people to speak to them personally, one-on-one. -on -one. So Absolutely. Yeah. And we have so many passionate um, developers and entrepreneurs really driven. And by the way, this is also how I select the team now. I mean, no one is coming on board for a salary. No way including myself. I'm here because I think this is the biggest entrepreneurial opportunity I will ever get. I want to build networks. I want to learn. I'm not here because I want to lead a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. I was pretty happy at the hedge fund. I'm a, very, I'm a capitalistic at the end of the day. Right. But, um, you know, I think this is the single biggest opportunity of, of me and probably also my next generation already. The knowledge I'm gaining now, the networks I'm building, they're going to last. And and the amount of education. Yeah, the amount of education that you're receiving from people that you wouldn't have had access to previously as well, because that's also something that I noticed about the, the, um, the Bitcoin Association is obviously you have the, the academy that you started. 
and that's free for people isn't it as well so there is no excuse not to kind of understand the basic principles of bitcoin sv because there is free education out there for people which a lot of blockchains i don't see that for so again that is something and amazing and i very much like craig i'm an eternal student and very much uh, value education personally so uh, it's the only way that you can grow you can never learn know enough and there is always new things to learn so hats off to you for, for having that kind of attitude as well because if you're more passionate about something and you're doing it because you believe in it then you mm -hmm. tend to i don't know just give more to that if that makes and sense and who is more passionate than those often you know young entrepreneurs that um basically have huge opportunity costs they could work for meta they could work for google right we have mm -hmm. so many brilliant people but they decide to focus on a niche blockchain right now right that um has uh, you know a, a few restrictions uh, on the reputation side maybe but they they go all in right they build a business they invest their capital and i mean they are fully driven so we should give the stage to them i don't ever want to see ba on stage again why are we hosting a BA-led event, right? It should be a Soundoshi event, a tokenized event, right? An, an LS digital event. And this is how we go about events now. Yeah, right? I love um, you right now. <laughs> Can we just all, everyone? It's so true. I mean, small business starts to drive that's the crucible of, of all business. Every large business was once a small business. It's where it all starts. And it's like, Craig is often saying, you know, businesses are led by individuals. So a person with a vision, you know, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully people are drawn to that person. But it really always starts with one very driven person. I think, though, the groundwork that's already been done, though, with what you've already previously done, the way that you've done the events and everything, you know, I mean, it's not gone to waste in any respect whatsoever, but it's actually really good to see that you appreciate what does work and doesn't work and actually see that moving forward there needs to be a restructuring of that. So, you know, I mean, great groundwork that's been done and, and obviously some amazing connections have come from those events as well, but yeah no i i agree com completely sound do an event for sound oh get a load of musicians in you've got them all joined up on the platform absolutely wonderful what what you know and, and whatever other businesses are out there that you know we've got tons of them on our channel as well every mm -hmm. one of them is going to appreciate just that little bit of a a bit of help from yourselves to just push them in the right direction and get people to see them and notice them and you obviously know how to do that that's what the events were about in the first place yeah so yeah what, what constitutes the practical help what yeah tangibly, i give what, you examples you know i have observed in the past that um, people started relying on ba doing the sales job for them right mm -hmm. i mean we had strong representatives but it's cannot the, the ecosystem cannot rely on a, on a few individuals i got calls from people that said hey i was in talks with this or i, I saw this article of this really cool equity research guy and he starts looking at blockchains now can you call him and i'm like why didn't you call him right mm -hmm. i mean it's an ecosystem it's in your interest to build a relationship and put out a perspective this person has never heard about before i joined the association i took lots of meetings with individuals that i thought were influencers but kind of misled by the misinformation and i just you know had lunch with them and we had a conversation about blockchain in general and uh, i'm in touch with many of these people until today the story we tell is unique in the mm -hmm. blockchain space and it makes so much sense no one has ever walked away and said it's bullshit People might walk away and say, well, it's a bit visionary, right? It's a bit far-fetched. Uh, I want to rather focus on the speculative story right now. Okay, I get it. Um, but they eventually come back. Mm. And it's in my personal interest to not put, you know, not, I'm not even talking BA or BSV. I'm talking putting my name out there, having those meetings and say, look, I'm Patrick Prince, and this is my story. They will remember. And, you know, I, I'm not sure to what degree I, I want to disclose names, but I, had in, I have amazing contacts by now simply from just taking meetings. Mm. This is in every decision makers kind of uh, room, boardrooms, etc., of every company. And they have no clue, including big consulting, including, I don't know, uh, big banks, etc. Everyone wants to understand blockchain. They might have tried a couple of, I don't know, pr proof of concepts. Everyone has failed so far. There's nothing. Which enterprise adoption does exist? Nothing, right? 
So um, go in there and say, look, how about not just exposing your clients to buy BTC and Ethereum? How about allowing them to, you know, actually buy an NFT that includes the music piece? And you know mm. why this is important, right? And then you explain and you show stuff. We have amazing um, applications already. Demoing it is still the mo single most powerful thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but let me just go back to your question. How do we um, implement this strategy now? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we have hired an engineering team. Um, in 2019 or so, I believe, it was uh, the Ljubljana conference, right after the coin in London or so. And I saw on screen a gentleman called Jed Wahab. And yes. I observed him and I felt the guy is, you know, good looking, presentable, likable, and so knowledgeable. Where has he mm. been hiding? Good so the point. moment I had the chance, I called him up and said, you have to work for us. And I just give you every opportunity you, you, you want. And he has paid this back, I think, already manifold. Um, he's a young guy, but extremely knowledgeable. And he's our direct mm. engineering now of... Um, he's of the, the light team. client guy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he was in charge of light client within Enchain. Um, but he's like the, you know, director of everything now from BA. And it's important because people, you know, developers, companies came to BA seeking know-how, exp uh, explanations. Um, and we couldn't provide them in the past because we had no technical capabilities. Okay, so now we have also hired, um, you know, Darren Kellenschwiller. He came on board, um, the guy you know, right? Yeah, that is amazing. And elevated um, yeah. Connor Mary. Connor is also brilliant. I mean, yeah. I learned from him at the BCH boys, right? And I was yeah. like, Connor, where have you been hiding? Like, why are you not coming to the war front? Why you know, yeah. I said in our education yeah. team, but you, um, I'm working very closely with Kurt, obviously. Um, and then we've hired now professional, experienced, seasoned project managers. Because we have to oversee and control all the work that software um, service providers, development companies yeah. do for us. We've also di diversified the service providers we have. Right. In the past, we were working with a very small set of companies, but I demanded that we have to diversify it because we want to work with the best. And the best is not just a, you know, an, a knowledge question. It's also often a cost question. It's a, how agile are you, right? How quickly can you deliver this? How close are you to the ecosystem? Are you willing to listen? I think you have to, to, to be very close to the ecosystem to, to be considered a partner for us. Because for many of these products, um, you know, the, the, the feedback is very relevant. Um, then we have um, um, we have uh, a couple of people that you might have never heard of. One is Jake Jones. He sits in our education team. I mean, he documents Terranaut. No one has ever heard of him. Fantastic. So I'm like, you know, why are you not coming to the front? Brandon Lee, right, an OG. But oh, um, yeah. he's leading for us now the um, engagement with IEEE. His background seems to be perfect. He's so knowledgeable. Um, so he's very closely involved with uh, the whole, you know. Um, Am I right in thinking that... Brendan did actually write quite a lot of the course as well for the Bitcoin Academy course. I understand most. Yeah. Oh, most. <laughs> also Vicky and so on. But there's also people, um, Evan Freeman. Evan yeah. Freeman, you know, I met him in Dubai the very first time physically. And um, we were discussing with an African company, you know, our online academy, etc. And then he discloses that he has built a learn to earn platform. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. And, you know, the yeah. whole concept he explained is like that in many, especially emerging countries, and I know this because I've worked and traveled a lot in these, in these regions, often families have to make a choice between, you know, are you, um, am I, you know, make a li is, the, is the child making a, a living for the family to survive or is it going to school? Yeah. Imagine how many supranational organizations, you know, might be interested in making sure the money actually arrives in, in those hands, but mm. still allowing them to be educated. This is not yeah. about you know, Bitcoin Academy, this can be any content. Mm -hmm. But you have now a mechanism that allows, that incentivizes economically um, students to actually go to school. Well, this is it. I mean, all the focus at the moment is on central bank digital currencies and all of that, but we forget the real sort of innovation of Bitcoin is to, you know, trickle down and reach the, the poorest, the poorest in the world, yeah, and bring them out of a poverty yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah, and you yeah. know we have those en amazing entrepreneurs in the team as well, and I'm asking why we're we not using these tools. Mm -hmm. Like, what prevents us? We should mm -hmm. be the first ones to to adopt it and actually sh yeah. sh show it to the world, right? Um, we have, uh, I think, you know, look at Elon Musk. He's trying to buy Twitter and um, add a transaction layer. At the same time, we have Pearsent that has done this to Twitter. You know, a year done, yeah. 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 So I'm saying, why don't we add a transaction layer to our Discord? 
So what we've put together now is a bounty program. And I mean, with the bounty program, we um, the platform we released for obviously the node software primarily, but we'll add very soon also bounties for tools that are missing or, you know, cool gadgets that we want to have. And for me, a transaction layer, a microtransaction layer to uh, the Discord is actually quite a showcase. I mean, mm. Elon, you know, here it is, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's such a blessing that big, big enterprise, big tech isn't looking at this yet or refuses to communicate about BSV. I think it's going to allow us to really, you know, get that upper hand in the entire new global economy. So, and I love a, how all the apps list all the features they want, like you're saying, and just attach a BSV price to it. And, uh, you know, they're waiting for their users to decide that they want it enough, you know. I mean, and then it appears. Um, right. It's a wonderful I just wanna, I just want to add a few more points, Ruth, if you allow me. Um, sure. Another one is uh, bitcoinsv.com, right? An overview of where you can actually get your hands on BSV didn't exist. A task force to actually reach out proactively and build relationships with exchanges, brokers, and so on. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this, most are not hostile. They're not. We've listed mm -hmm. now on Huobi, right? We listed on Bittrex. I was at their summer party yesterday with uh, Bittrex uh, Global. You know, nice. they have us. They have a blast with us. Um, you saw KuCoin also in Dubai. Um, we have two more in the pipeline that are going to list already for sure. So, you know, we're building those relationships also proactively. No mm -hmm. one is mad, right? Um, there's a few that have, you know, uh, from the past uh, conflicts, primarily with Craig. But the reality is when they meet us, they realize, I mean, these guys are professional. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to make money. And, and the technology works the way that it should work. Yeah, Which I mean, we're having difficulties. Let's be honest. There's difficulties around uh, large blocks, right? People falling off sync. And we have experienced the same. But there's solutions to this. And Light mm -hmm. Client comes in here. It's, mm -hmm. it's a key tool. And I think mm -hmm. once we have light client phase one now, the toolkit um, out, out there, we added videos, we try to make it much more accessible, documented properly. There's a uh, phase two going on right now where we actively work with exchanges to define the requirements they have. And then there's no more excuses. All of a sudden, BSV is you know, the most economic coin to offer oper in, in terms of operational cost, mm -hmm. right? That's it's, right. It's a bit, you have okay. to run the boat yourself. Yes, yes. And last comment on, on uh, you know, TSC and education. Also, there we are making changes. Um, we get a lot of requests from, you know, governments, even countries, um, representatives of companies that say we want a practical oriented program. The academy as it is, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But not everyone needs to be at the knowledge of, a, I don't know, a Brandon Lee or a Robin Cosa. No. Mm -hmm. Most just have to understand what the tools enable them to do. Hmm. And once they get their entrepreneurial right. opportunity, they just have to use the API endpoints and all the rest of it. Yes. And especially in countries like, you know, Uganda, Nigeria, where we're engaging now. And so cool. look at Block Dojo, the success is evidence for me. So we said instead of you know creating more and more courses, in theory, we take those that we have, essential classes, you know, the basics, we you know add the reward layer of you know companies like fifth work that reward you for you know getting questions right mm -hmm. we can enable certification in the metaverse or the metanet through you know illus digital we can you know we can do all this cool stuff and demo how the future of education could look like and then combine it with you know teach-ins of um, company representatives i mean casey you have a company why are you building bsv you know someone in in, in uganda should should get uh, your perspective and hear why why you do it but why do you do what you do and what what is so unique about it and with this inspiration they you know will also start seeing you know money right they will see well there's a real opportunity for me a permissionless ledger an infrastructure i can just you know start building on mm -hmm. um and then we can offer the gateways um gate to chain elas digital again bionex we have so many companies that are already providing the tools not mm -hmm. everyone has to reinvent the wheels Mm -hmm. Right, many of SDKs, many of solutions that make it fairly easy to build business models. Twitch, I don't know, mm -hmm. Handcash, all of these guys. So mm -hmm. why are we not just offering the tools and and un help them understand what is possible? And I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they will come up with completely new ideas. So we want to focus much more on entrepreneurs now, rather than you know purely like developers. They're equally important. Don't get me wrong, but once you have an entrepreneur excited, they rally a team of of builders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is the partnership with Block Dojo that I kind of want to achieve. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. 
bit of a... <laughs> well, well, no, no, that's a good tangent there. I mean, when you say uh, a relationship with Block Dojo you want to achieve, what do you see as being the linking point between the BA and, and the Block Dojo? I mean, I think they're both great organizations, so I can see where you want to. But... Yeah, I love the fact that it was created totally independent of BA or any of our key stakeholders. There's nothing to do with us. But there's entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. successful entrepreneurs, that see another big opportunity for themselves. And it works magically. I mean, mm-hmm. if I look at the quality of companies in the core two now, if I look also at their backgrounds, these are not, you know, the average of fresh out of college kind of startups. There's really qualified, experienced people that mm-hmm. decide all of a sudden to try a blockchain powered kind of company. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Craig Massey, James Merchant, they are brilliant entrepreneurs. They teach also hard skills that are transferable. How do I do financial mm-hmm. modeling? How do I build a budget? How do I build a nice deck? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Robin Kosick comes in and says, look, I have all the tools you guys need. He's freaking smart, right? Oh, yes. Amazing. Yes. I mean, yeah. also, you know, the, the business yeah. sense in, in this case, I have to, uh, I really, you know, I admire him for this. Um, and then, you know, um, the, the idea is that out of our programs, we could then feed almost um, the, the most promising business models and ideas into the dojo. This is where I see an angle. Mm. But I can also tell you this, they have now, a, how do they call it? Um, basically like in um, a company building program for that they offer large enterprises. And the idea is um, instead of, you know, companies building their own incubator, they go to an experienced incubator and, you know, throw in the money and get a company, a startup out of it, right? The focus is on a business problem, an industry problem they have. And I think that's very promising. That's led by Osman now, if you have met her. Yeah, we, yeah, we've interviewed her. Love, love Osman. Yeah. Block <laughs> ventures, sorry, block ventures. They call it. That's a very unique idea. I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's an existing model, but um, you know, in the in the and and they already found a niche with a an incubator focused on on blockchain startups, at least in the Greater London area. And you have to see. I mean, all of their, um, you know business lunches that they organize are externally financed. I think I can say this, but they are, this is not, you know, dojo finance this is not BA finance. This is, this is external legal firms, you know, growth funds. This is, um, you know, accelerator programs that want to be close to them. This right. is exactly how it should go. Attracting attention like a honeypot. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I mean, we, we spoke to Jack Rogers as well. Okay. Dr. Jack Rogers from Exeter University, who is the yep. uh, economics, and he's helping as well at Block Dojo. Um, so, are you like? I mean, he's got a he started the fintech course at Exeter University, which is like the first one of its kind in this country I know of, anyway. So, are you doing more with Jack as well to try and yep. help him with his? I was introduced recently. Uh, brilliant guy. Also, I think ahead of the curve. Um, and we are organizing an event together right now, actually two, and there's also IEEE involved, I think that I can say. But it's pretty, um, it's pretty cool. And um, you know, we, have several, we, have, we have so many target audiences. We have entrepreneurs, we have maybe pure devs, we have um, you know, the academic, the scientific world. Um, we have um, you know, students, yeah. right? It, yeah. So um, it, BA doesn't know the needs all, of all of them. So in the past, people coming to us and say, you know what, um, BA should really do an event for the academic world. You know, well, we tried, but are we really good in this? How about you do it and I just give you the resources? Mm-hmm. How does that sound? And how about you make it your company event and it's just sponsored by BA or BSV blockchain? And this is how we go about it now. I mean, I can tell you the next few events we're organizing right now is um, Abuja, Nigeria, led by Dominion. Oh, really? Really? I have contact over there. <laughs> yeah, oh, fantastic. please, you know, work with Mohammed. He's uh, fantastic. He's very vibrant. Um, then um, Unbounded, doing an investor event, right? Support about doing what event, sorry? Unbounded. An investor Unbounded. event Unbounded. in New York. Investor, right. Okay. In September. A time chain labs doing a big university event with a famous professor from India and uh, potentially also some people from the, again, the IEEE space and so on in uh, Bangalore in July. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know, oh, well, because um, Nidhi, um, Aurora, and um, Rohan 
are starting a podcast as well to cater to the Indian audience. So mm -hmm. what a great, great opportunity there as well to do things with them to, you know, get all that information out to the Indian audience as well. Absolutely. Fantastic. And you know who caters best to the Indian market? The Indian team, right? Because they know how yeah. it works and they know yeah. the, 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 the politics, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the rules and regulations. And so it's a disgrace that we in the past tried to, um, you know, be overly smart and, and, and come up with one template for the world. It should be locally organized mm -hmm. and we give the opportunities to the ecosystem companies. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you're catering in the right way to the right people from the right people who know people on the ground and know the culture and the language and everything else. So, yeah, yeah. that's that's a really. By the way, have you been to the uh, South Florida Citadel? Not yet. Anyone? I'm going to... Not personally. <laughs> But that's oh, another, yeah. that's another one of the initiatives Robin. Yeah. that came out of our, exactly, Robin is there, as a, he's a, our ambassador as well. That's another one of the initiatives that came out of our kind of due diligence work where we said it's completely missing. Mm -hmm. And yes. so Kurt and me spoke, and I said, Kurt, you know, open such a space. We help you. And ask him how many conditions I gave him. Like zero. You do it your way. I, I want to oh. open one I'll open one in Missouri, just throwing it out there. <laughs> yes, please. Look, I mean, it's, the other day I was I'm looking extending. at you know, what Bitcoin Apostles doing, and they've got all the beautiful NFTs and oh, yeah. you know, connected out with like, PSV vibes in the whole place. I'm like, man, I want to do that. I just joined Meetup to do local um, monthly BSV meetups here and start that. So, anyways, just throwing that out. No, there. excellent. <laughs> Look, I mean, there's several proposals right now. We have opened one in Berlin as well, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. There's Poland on the radar. Um, there's also Barcelona on the radar. Mm -hmm. I want driven people that show ownership, right? Mm -hmm. The way you do it is 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 in left to you. We um, we support them, and then we mm -hmm. um, we judge on the results at the end of the year. It's merit based, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is how it should be. It's it's a proof of work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Proof of work, which is exactly what what you know it's all about really isn't it and actually i just want to point this out i mean because you work with regulation front it's a regulation friendly ecosystem as well so absolutely we're, yeah we're but you know there's topics on. there's topics i think where we restricted ourselves um, one example is issuing tokens right and i appreciate you know in the past when the times of ico um craig was very adamant that it's you know it's not legal but people we're not listening carefully, right? What he said is that ICO is kind of an unregulated security issuance. It's obviously illegal, right? In every jurisdiction. But mm -hmm. um, an example today in Switzerland, you have very clear regulation of what is allowed. There is utility tokens, payment tokens, there is um, security slash equity tokens. And there is very clearly defined what kind of regulation you need to, uh, to enable that. And so when you talk to him on this, Right, he's like, of course, it makes sense, oh, right? Yeah. It's fine because if you follow the rules, and that's all we're asking. So good, mm. right? So I think you know we'll see the emergence also of companies issuing tokens, maybe launch pads, right? We need cool. uh, yeah. these are enablers, and they are very much legally possible today, mm. um, but you know they have to be within the the laws. Otherwise, your business is also not sustainable. We'll see it with all the you know many of the the crypto players today. It falls apart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not yeah, like I, that we, that I just we thought, have extra rules on you that are not already kind of set in the jurisdiction. I just saw the um, gentleman that first introduced me to Bitcoin in 2017. Um, John Barksdale was arrested in Thailand for $174 million fraud for Ormus coin. Ormus, Ormus coin or something. I was like, oh my gosh, that's ironic. I'm so glad I didn't continue following his guidance and mentorship into like the world. Yeah, so just so grateful for you know Block Dojo and, and what you guys are talking about doing and this kind of stuff because it's gonna help so many people not be sucked into all the Ponzi schemes that will completely financially devastate their entire family. So mm. big love for what you're talking about on this interview right now. And um, yeah, any way that women of BSB can be of service to that mission, we are completely here to help and assist um, with entrepreneurs, yeah, look, uh, wording and all that we stuff. All so. we, we would like to run our own event sometime. So, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. you know, there is initiatives, by the way. I'm not sure if you have met um, Vasilisa. She sits in the uh, with the MENA office now in Dubai. She's a lady that joined. Um, um, she was in Barcelona, I think, before that. Extremely driven. She did a lot of work in the background of the uh, the big Dubai convention. Well connected. She was at the Barcelona event that we had just this week, uh, also helping to represent us. Um, she runs a woman in blockchain initiative in Dubai. So oh, I think you know, there is synergies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, I, I would just say thank you for the list as well that you gave us. We are, um, I appreciate that list. Oh, yeah, we're more, yeah. And uh, we're working through it. So, yeah, that's... Uh, there's more. I think there's very interesting people joining us. I mean, it's mm -hmm. getting to the degree, and this is, I think, a good signal that I cannot stay abreast of, you yeah. know, new projects, of new individuals. Um, but it's excellent. Mm. Right. Festival. That's kind of really why, sort of why we wanted to start this as well, because there were so many mm -hmm. businesses and entrepreneurs out there that were kind of just, we knew about, but we could see that there wasn't, you know, the people in the right places couldn't see them. So one right. of the things that I wanted to do was just talk to people within a social aspect that we were speaking to on Twitter and stuff and just give them, a, 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 yeah, just a, a platform that they could talk about their Excellent. business. On. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a multiplier. You know, people learn about it and they start becoming more confident. Often you're also asking questions that they might not be comfortable asking, right? People feel like they're educated, and uh, but the reality is probably 99% of the market is not. The thing, you know, we felt all the way from the beginning is like, let us ask, ask all the dumb questions so you don't have to, you know, or you don't have to be as dumb as we do. So, yeah, but like, I mean, this, this whole blockchain is so vast and deep and wide that nobody knows all of it. You know, we've all no. got our own sort of dipping in and, and dark, murky waters that we can't see through. So, you know. I mean, just going back to Barcelona, we had this, uh, we attended this blockchain conference, European blockchain conference, you called it, turned out to be kind of a pure crypto conference, a little bit uh, disappointing. But we hosted a meetup. We had 60 people showing up, 60 BSV, hard, some cool. hardcore supporters. Yeah, and we didn't know them. None of us knew them. Wow. So under the radar, right, there's a lot of people all sitting on the fence. I can tell That's you this. Yeah. They are like, you know. Yeah. If you just hold the space, they'll they'll start to come out of the woodworks. That's what I'm experiencing. There's more people here locally that actually do know about it, and just nobody's bringing them together. So we've got to – that's grassroots. That's what it takes, local yes, community absolutely. building. And so the meetups for us, they were successful in the past, and I think we're bringing back a bit this culture. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be, you know, all these expensive events. Mm -hmm. We're doing the grassroots work, and, you know, everyone is able to participate. So what about, how, what about the hackathons? Are you still doing hackathons? Um, well? Same topic. Does it have to be a BA-led hackathon? Mm -hmm. One thing we discussed recently, and we'll see if it happens, but it's a, a haste-led. They said, look, we have connections to this big university in California. We want to host a hackathon. We said, fine, here you go, right? Like, what yeah. do you need? Um, it's much sexier to present uh, as a company, said, look, we're building on BSV because, or they're not even talking about BSV, right? They're saying, look, this is the unique solutions we provide. But naturally, people ask, well, how is this possible? Because it's not with all the other blockchains. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, it, I, I would, I help, I, I want to enable and empower the companies and the builders. I don't want to be on stage. Like this is, in, and you know what, I've been in, with BA for two years. I've never been on a podcast like this. This is not my role. I try to serve everyone else. Good point. Yeah. No, I think you're because right. Their success, their success rule will be my success. Think um, about it, right? What's my role? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. you know, the whole thing about Bitcoin, isn't it? It's like if we can uh, basically increase the value of the coin, we all win. So we're all just trying to basically make the pie bigger. I mean, and I'm also talking to everyone, there. by the way. I'm talking to yeah. everyone in the ecosystem. There's no one yeah. I'm excluding or I haven't talked to before. Like, uh, if people feel so, you know, directly reach out to me. And I've supported many people from all camps. Let's see that. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. I was going to say as well, I mean, don't, you know, public speaking um, is known to be one of the things that most people are scared of. So I'm an, I've been an actress and I've done stage work and even so, even five years acting every single weekend, I still get stage fright. So, you know, it's one of those things. You can either do it or you can't do it. So, 
Ryan just, Ryan just sent me a thing that says, do you want to speak at this event? And I said, on a podcast, <laughs> I can't reply at the moment. But that is my biggest thing, too, is, you know, we're, we're, some of us entrepreneurs, you know, aren't season to where getting up on stage in front of thousands of people is, you know, uh, that's nerve wracking to me right now to think, but I still want to get this content out. Like the, my passion for BSV and the truth and getting the information out there has allowed me to overcome my fears of getting, putting myself out there, which is mm -hmm. another reason I've been so grateful for you ladies and this women of B container that we have here is we get to come out together and ask all these dumb questions. So we don't, you know, so um, there's so much strength in community and coming together that this is definitely the right path forward for you guys. I feel there's not much to lose. People always act like, you know, I'm, I don't want to make mistakes, but mistakes, what the, the price is all time low. Like, mm. well, you know, we have substance, <laughs> but we're not proud and we're not promoting the other camps are promoting, but they don't have substance. Yeah, mm. it's 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 crazy to me. I'm I'm puzzled. Let's say why why um, some people are so have so low confidence on their products, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also start charging, start charging for services which are great, right? Don't mm -hmm. always feel like you have to provide it for free. Well, they're doing yeah. they're doing masterminds, charging people like twenty thousand dollars just to go to a mastermind to learn how to like buy a JPEG that's not even on the blockchain and stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. So to think. That, you know, I was only charging $9.99 for a white glove onboarding session for anyone, no matter what vertical they were in. I knew enough about the whole ecosystem to point them in the right direction and get them, you know, uh, streamlined. And so um, it's just it's mind boggling to me how much money is going into the wrong places right now that are feeding mm -hmm. things that aren't evolving our planet and our, you know, collective. So. Um, this is what it, this is the way, this is exactly what you're talking about is what we have to do as soon as possible. Just stay focused. It's a lot of big numbers, right? In sales, mm -hmm. you just knock many doors at mm -hmm. some point, you know, a few will open mm -hmm. so, yeah, and then yeah. eventually you land a deal. And I'm telling you, it's, the time plays in our favor. I'm just not mm -hmm. patient enough, but, um, I yeah. think, you know, there's no way around the economics of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So, but we're making our life sometimes ourselves a bit difficult. I try, at least from BA's perspective, to remove some of the obstacles we have put there ourselves. No, mm -hmm. I, I know what you're saying, because especially lately, I think when the price goes low, everybody starts like infighting a bit and like turns inward. Um, we've just got to keep pointing outward and, and keep moving forward outwards. Like, you know, there's, there's like hundreds of the smartest people I've ever met in BSV. Yeah. You know, uh, there's nothing stopping us. There's nothing in our way, really. Yeah. I feel so sometimes with the devs that they get mm -hmm. stuck in uh, solving problems. They want to solve problems and problems. And if there's no more problems left, they create problems. That's, That's yeah. why I'm more, I'm better with entrepreneurs. They just see opportunities and run. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if somebody does, uh, if somebody's got an idea and they want to put on an event, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get in touch with a BA? Who do they need to speak to at a BA? Yeah, that's one of my big um, objectives to um, start putting out all the faces we have. There's not two or three faces like we had in the past. There's many faces and they should all be known. I mean, the easiest is just to go on Discord and write to one of the administrators, right? Mm -hmm. um, but over the next few weeks and months, we are also um, publishing a new uh, kind of team structure. You will have clearly dedicated vertical leads, right? You will have their email address, they're accessible. We also started for our internal partners, I mean, there's many partners, an all hands call where we in one hour per month cover all the verticals and describe, you know, the activities plus a bit of the roadmap ahead. And it's also for our partners to better understand what is the, 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 the breadth of activities. And we have really many things going on. Often uh, people are not informed enough, but you know, for engineering, talk to Jed Wahab, right? For, um, you know, or talk to Darren Kellenschwiller, talk to Connor Mary. These are the engineering leads. For anything mm -hmm. uh, education, talk to Evan Freeman. For anything TSC, um, there's Julie uh, Goodroad, and there's a whole TSC uh, committee, right? They're all accessible, they're all on the webpage. Um, then um, uh, we have uh, a Dubai office, right? It's Mohammed. Many of you guys have met him. Um, there is Liz Lee in China. Um, we yeah. have uh, a marketing representative, Martin Coxell, right? He leads also our event agenda. Um, we have uh, people such as, you know, uh, Martin Redstechny in uh, Poland. I mean, he does incredible work. The guy's a machine. He's a machine. Yeah. I've never seen mm -hmm. anything like this. No, you know, and very few people know him. He came, like, we met him at an event in, uh, in what, 
uh, sometime next last year, it was an event in Ljubljana and uh, Marcin Sarakovsky, the other guy flew over and uh, the event was not so well attended. It was still kind of COVID times, uh, but they got to speak. And the first reaction of Marcin Redstechny was that, you know, oh, you're from BSV, but it's a scam, right? And then the typical reaction. So they started chatting uh, for like two hours. And then next day, the guy arrives with two A4 pages of questions. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I, had, I couldn't sleep. I did all this research. And yeah. I mean, how could I miss that? Anyway, no, that's not a joke. That had really happened. One week later, he gives us a business plan. says, I want to work for you guys in Poland. He is the president of the Polish Blockchain Association. Oh, and so he joins us like a month later. And on day four of his kind of work week, he hosts a meetup with IBM to talk about NFTs on BSV with 250 guests live. He wow. didn't even know about BSV the month before. That's, That's amazing. Yeah. Doesn't have that is any we, Doesn't we feel need like to I have to educate you myself. You into your about... orbit. Basically, everything that goes into your orbit is caught. <laughs> I need people like this. They jump on opportunities. They get yes. it. They start right away. Mm -hmm. And they yes. learn a bit on the way, maybe, right? Um, but the guy is smart. He's experienced. He has uh, done many IT projects. Like he, he gets it. Um, anyway, we've done recently a, an event in Warsaw, a pure e gaming focused event. Like everyone was there from Hayes to, I don't know, Hank Cash, all the guys. And we just asked him. I think it was a great event. Uh, unique. We did it in a kind of e gaming um, sports focused venue. So fantastic infrastructure. And the quality of discussions we had were really, really good. So Poland in general, I'm a big fan. We have mm -hmm. hired the fourth Polish person now to the team. It's a big yeah, thing. That's like Sound Ocean based as well. Yeah. From Sound Ocean. Ocean. I mean, these guys, have you experienced that? Yeah. Is great. We got to get Luke Radowski. Anybody that knows We Are Change, Luke Radowski, he's Polish. And he's a big crypto BTC supporter. Um, friend of mine I met a long time ago. And I've just been trying to tell him about BSV, but it's like Stonewall. You know, some people are like completely opposed to even communicating about it. So, anyways, yeah. yeah. The Polish, the Polish content you just said there, I think might spark his interest. Yeah, in general, we found the market to be very receptive, and mm -hmm. you know, many of the blockchains actually have the developer base, the backbone, in Eastern Europe, and now many in Poland. And this is a market that's not really catered. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we have made very, very good experience there. Yeah, there's a clever move as well because there's been so much noise about the wrong thing um, mm -hmm. from, unfortunately, I am going to say the States because a lot of the noise has come from the States. Um, so it's good that little countries in Eastern Europe are coming on board on this because they usually get left out, you know. So that's a great thing as well. And um, you've got a careers board. I don't think a lot of people, because a conversation I had on Twitter earlier today, I don't think a lot of people know that you actually have like a careers jobs board as well. So that's something that's been in operation since the BA started. Is that right? Yeah, for some time. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's one of the many things people don't know about. Um, so, you know, we have, <laughs> we just have to be a much better job in consolidating uh, the access. We have way too many websites, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. um, we we have, uh, let's say we have a lot of work ahead, but we are, we are aware of most of these things. I uh, I appreciate any kind of feedback, of course. Um, I appreciate also all hands that want to help us. Um, some companies have reached out and said, look, we think this is missing and we want to build it. Be my guest, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> like I, I welcome any, any, um, any professional help as well. We've also mm -hmm. had people working with us where it didn't work out, and that's also okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I think that we have so many brilliant minds. Um, this is a mission of all of us. It's mm -hmm. not BA will solve it for you, and it's particularly not Craig will solve it for all of us. We have to stop mm -hmm. believing that he yeah. can pull this off himself. He cannot. Mm -hmm. He's the only one man that's imp an impossible mission yeah. to do on your own. You do need support, yeah. But, you know, I see yeah, people kind of... Um, you know, uh, kind of, you know, uh, criticizing him and so on, but very few stand up and say, look, I help you, right? Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself knowledgeable, particularly among all the brilliant people that we have, but um, I stand next to him, right? And I have, um, you know, I'm doing this 24 seven, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think we're making real progress. And uh, I'm really excited about the people we have now at the front. 
Sounds like so, it. So do we. We start with Craig as well. Even yes. Though. Yeah. He's yeah. He's right on many things. Sometimes I wish he was wrong because he's just something. <laughs> <so> <laughs> good. But he's right. <laughs> he's always <laughs> right. Yeah. We'll learn from it, but uh, we rarely do. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's a fun ride. We also have to we have to enjoy the whole thing. It's a it's a freaking roller coaster, but you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's also very rewarding. And um, you know, if you truly believe in this, you know, come on board, um, mm -hmm. all hands on deck, and work with us. Um, we are very receptive these days. There's no pushback. I'm listening to everyone. I appreciate mm -hmm. also some of the biggest critics. I'm talking to directly. I'm hearing their feedback, and I'm also implementing changes where we completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing some of the same stuff that. You know, some of the loud critics online are, are, are saying, and I, um, you know, I'm working on uh, agreeable solutions to change some things and how we go about them. That's really exciting because I know you probably heard, you know, Ryan was um, doing some work with some of the other people in the space with like a social Bitcoin web consortium thing that he was putting together because he was feeling some of the needs in the, uh, you know, space weren't being met by the BA and the TSA and stuff. So really uh, awesome that this is happening. And thank you for being so accessible to people to come to you with all their gripes and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, just helping propel this entire space forward the way you are. I think you should be in front of the camera way more often because um, you've got, you know, a very impactful delivery in your content too. So like you said, all hands on deck and um, we appreciate what you guys are doing for sure. You know, when I asked Connor Murray to come forward and, and help w within the engineering team, he said, whatever it takes to complete the mission. I think that's yeah. the attitude. Yeah, I think that's what everybody actually feels. They weren't trying to like come together behind anybody's back to do anything, but like we all know that these things need to be addressed and, you know, built these interoperable protocols and all these different things. Yeah. So who cares how, who gets it done as long as it gets done. Um, but people are willing to come together in all kinds of ways. So um, it's really exciting that there's so much uh, revamping going behind the scenes with you guys to propel it forward. Like whoever. Yeah. I mean, thank you. You know, the number of times I've heard within my team also, Oh, I can do that. Like I'm trying to really empower all my team members as well. And again, the same story, their success will be my success. So, um, I want to make sure everyone's potential is um, released. And um, I think we're going to see some great stuff. I think really like, cool he's got like at least four, three or four core skills most of the time that people <laughs> don't know about. Yeah. No, I mean, we've been finding the same with, with women in PSV. We can all chip in in our own way, you know, um, and it just gets it, gets it done. And it's very true what you say about your, you know, other people's success is also your success because of the ecosystem that we're working in. So, you know, I mean, Ray, uh, her project Molly Match, I think is really exciting, you know, and especially a female developer developing a game, you know, in the ecosystem is a great thing. So, you know, Robin, she's a, an amazing powerhouse that's got some amazing connections with the universities and, and everything, you know. So Casey's doing her little thing. Ruth's got her little thing that she's doing, communicating with businesses and revamping their websites to make them look pretty, you know, which is a great thing as well. So we've all got, we've all got some things that we can add to the system, which is great. Bitcoin Association also has a membership structure so I am a, like a basic member and I've been one for a very long time um, but do you want to talk about the membership structure as well for people just so they understand yeah. how that, that works so I mean we are partially financed by membership fees at this point and we have also donors right which people are aware of and um, we obviously want to grow the members we have about 1,500 or so right now registered across um, the kind of non-voting voting and affiliate um, uh, stage yeah, that's what, that's what, and yeah. that's one the one we referred to and um you know but at the same time i can tell you this we are um sufficiently funded right it's not like we are um scared of of we will not be gone there's no way we are gone we'll stay here we're gonna survive the crypto winter that's and good. uh yeah. like you know i'm zero worried about my job let's say that yeah. um, so winter is coming bring it on <laughs> yeah, it's our time. This is a window of opportunity it's, for us. I say this now is a risk-proof business. Yeah, 
now we need to be, we need to be out and, and speak much more. <coughs> with People are receptive. I mean, miners are struggling with profitability. Those financing my miners are really worried about what's happening after the next happening, right? Um, now we need to be out there. Um, we have, um, you know, a lot of education to do with exchanges, with services such as blockchain, right? That also falls off sync. Um, but I, th I think it's all falling into place. We have the right capabilities on board now. And uh, we have this, this extremely passionate people involved. Now, again, no one in the team is here for a job. They're all here because they want to, you know, create their own success at BSV. Mm -hmm. And in order to create that success, they also have to make sure that the platform works as it's designed. Mm -hmm. And for this, you know, we have some more work ahead. There's things that are not working, like Mappy, right? There was very valid feedback, right? By people, um, um, you know, online and, um, we're gonna we're gonna listen to this and we're gonna change it. Um, I'm not saying things are perfect. We are far from perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Dean Little, sorry, yeah. I just want to give him the credit. Yeah. Absolutely, Dean yeah. Little, right? He was the one putting out this post. There's a lot of truth in this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't doubt his technical ability for sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's I mean absolutely fascinating, and and I, I'm really pleased to hear that you're taking a facilitator role, primarily. I think that's absolutely. Wonderful news. Empower, enable, and facilitate. I keep telling the team yeah. the same thing again and again. And uh, it, it's a relief as well for many, because sometimes we felt the burden of doing certain things ourselves, but we're not the best. The best sellers are already there, right? They're building. Mm -hmm. We should allow them to sell the unique, you know, the USP of their company, the service, the product, mm -hmm. and they should build their own ecosystems. Eventually, we'll all be a BSV ecosystem anyway. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about interoperability? I mean, is that something you're also focused on? Well, look, um, we believe in one world, one chain eventually, but um, bridges, I think, you know, we would be dumb if we don't build bridges mm -hmm. because there's a lot of liquidity around there. And sometimes it doesn't know where to go, especially in this uh, downward trending markets. And um, I think BSV and some of these, you know, startups, which are very, pro or some of the projects which are very promising, they are, they are finding interest across all investors, which mm -hmm. brings me back to tokens. I'm thinking sometimes, you know, there's uh, perfect business models for utility tokens, mm -hmm. right? And for me coming from the, the regulated financial industry, I get a lot of interest from uh, companies um, and also from the banking side um, to issue, to start issuing securities effectively, tokenized, right, in some form. And here, I just want to mention Tokenize itself, the company, and mm -hmm. James Belding. I mean, th this product just resonates extremely well with uh, financial industry players because it's very deep. It's probably the deepest tokenization solution, especially for the financial industry I've ever seen, right? And uh, James carries a, a very strong knowledge in the topic. So he's a partner. When you present him, people typically walk away and say, wow. Mm -hmm. So personally, I'm also taking a lot of meetings. Again, I'm not doing this because I, uh, uh, you know, f I do it primarily for myself, right? I go out and, and give them this unique perspective. And this has mm -hmm. created quite a powerful network. Switzerland is a small place, so is Zurich. Okay. People know each other and you start mm -hmm. positioning yourself um, and mm -hmm. you get invited because you provide this unique view that no one else has ever provided them. Mm -hmm. And um, in certain sectors, especially the financial industry, there is no innovation. So they are seeking new stories that they can also present to the clients, right? I've been invited to very exclusive dinners mm -hmm. where they had the ultra high net worth clients around and they said, hey, Patrick, how about you tell us what blockchain can, what else can it do? They're mm -hmm. investing in tokens, right? What, what else is there? And then I present a couple of unique uh, projects and, you know, just give them the, wow, I didn't know, mm -hmm. right? I mean, one thing that um, I keep speaking about is also the, the Bitcoin phone. I wish it might be, you know, more pursued, but the whole idea is just so out of the perspective that most people have. And so, you know, what happens then is they, they, they come back and they say, look, it's very interesting. How do we, how do we start it? How do we go about it? Mm -hmm. And this is where in the past we were missing a, an easy onboarding experience for mm -hmm. clients. And so mm -hmm. our new community lead, George Samuel, um, together with oh, yeah. some other partners is actually working on this heavily. Um, cool. And we're going to implement it and reflect this in the in the in the user interface of our web pages. So it should be just you know a f the five step guide to start building on busy. 
Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And George's speciality is about community building as well, isn't it? So what a great person to bring on board. Love George. Yeah. I, yeah. I observe and then I just go and ask the people to join. That's, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see myself as, you know, making the change. I see myself more and more as, you know, someone who just, yeah, who just identifies the right talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's you keep making this joke about what's the movie with Brad Pitt where he's basically we are like a talent scout in that respect that the talent scout of BSV yeah. is, is what you are, are becoming at the moment then. It's funny the because in finance, I was always, a, I thought of myself as a player. I thought I'm a really strong player, right? I, I've worked in, for the investment bank. I've worked in the buy side. I've worked uh, in strategy consulting for the financial industry. I've seen 360 almost of the financial industry. Mm -hmm. And I was so confident. And now here, I'm not a player. I feel like I'm a coach. As in, like, mm -hmm. I just select the, the, the best then, players for the right positions. That's, I'm just making this analogy that, because I think that's the role of a manager eventually. It's not mm -hmm. like you solving the problem. It's you identifying the right people that can, mm -hmm. you know, solve all these problems. Mm -hmm. Do that for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect approach. Yeah, that's, that's what it takes. Well, we will so definitely be in touch and look forward to uh, co-creating with you guys some way somehow is uh, focused on you know women in the industry and getting them educated 100%. So yeah we should and mm -hmm. you know among all the women i've met and i meet you know uh, representatives in the whole crypto industry so much nonsense mm -hmm. so people like yourself yeah. i mean you're the you know top 0.1 mm -hmm. percent this voices should be heard mm -hmm. And you know the this podcast here is is, is, is perfect, right? Um, but also as individuals, I mean, seek business meetings. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. there people are interested. The story is so unique, and this will not last forever. It's a window of opportunity, right? right? The more you learn, mm -hmm. you're like you know uh, basically creating your own competition. But the more mm -hmm. people come on board, the less um, you know, the less unique your story is, um, mm -hmm. which is also okay. We will be rewarded otherwise. But there's benefits to it, you know, a network brings you, it's not just um, kind of uh, relationships uh, that you build right away, but um, I observe that enterprises, they typically are laggers, right? They they mm -hmm. first, you know, said all this blockchain stuff, it's nonsense. Yeah, then they tried to well. hire talent. They realized, yeah. well, all the talent is already building their own stuff now. Mm -hmm. And then they start acquiring. Companies. companies, yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is where SAP and all these players will be. They will just eventually buy companies up for extreme valuations because you have also the deep pockets. Mm -hmm. so you can be in this camp that you actually that's create so something. true. And I think that's exactly why, you, as you're saying, you should be focusing on entrepreneurs because, you know, the, the big companies will get there eventually, but they'll acquire someone. They won't. Yes. Yeah, they're not going to be the place where it begins. And yes. companies are also advisors. So I'm just speculating, but I'm, I would not be surprised if eventually when, you know, uh, the realization is, is, more, um, is, is more widespread, that people come back to you and say, well, look, Ruth, I remember you told me first, right? Mm -hmm. And they are seeking your advice. I don't know, board positions, advisory mandates. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, what your, I don't know, roots are. This, this is an industry that is just being created. And everyone can find it, his or her place. Mm -hmm. It's it's and it's leveling the playing field. Yeah, and everyone it, has the same chance here. And that's it a does great feel like a blessing to be able to share uh, this content and this information with other people because it's so life changing um, if they actually act on it and start implementing and using and getting involved. They their lives will never be the same, which is why you experience that like epiphany in people when they really get it and they see how different the world can really be. It's, it's a beautiful thing to share. That's honestly my favorite part. And you see, this is the, is the analogy to Bitcoin, right? A network that allows anyone to basically build a business on a scalable infrastructure mm -hmm. yeah. where mm -hmm. costs, where costs actually incur as you also incur revenue. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. Bootstrappable. Yeah. Yeah, markets like Uganda, where we're looking at now to do a partnership, an educational and, and kind of a bit of an incubator type of partnership, or Nigeria, are huge for me. Mm. I like competition. Million. I'm not afraid of competition. Yeah, <laughs> Let them come, right? And they should be. Um, I'm personally exposed a bit also to East Africa. I have some 
personal business endeavors, but I hate the fact that um, a business idea there is worth way less than in the Western Hemisphere because you don't yeah. have access to capital, because yeah. you don't have access to, I don't know, infrastructure. So I feel like it's and leveling the playing field. There's some and smart it's... minds as well over there as well, and they just no, they just don't have the same opportunity to be able to grab hold of and actually make it work because yeah yeah i i, I completely understand where you're coming from the african front it really grates me as well sometimes so, there's you know. well, financially right, good. i was just gonna say diddy and i you you and i were talking about the huge movement um, with ubuntu over in south mm. africa where it's michael africa. tellinger is using um cardano for his token in his project and i was trying to get him educated on, you know, with Brendan Lee on an episode here with us or something, or a tokenized guy or somebody. Um, I mean, some of these entrepreneurs that are building stuff, they have such amazing revolutionary projects and ideas, but they're going to get completely stopped when they're on the wrong chain. And some so of them have quite big followings as well who trust them oh, implicitly yeah. as well. So, you know, I mean, it, again, with the entrepreneurs, yeah, what a great a great way to start actually from you know your bottom of the pyramid <laughs> yeah you, you, you hear sometimes uh you know calvin or you see him tweeting uh we've already won right yeah. and people are like you know what the hell obviously you know i'm not rich so how did i win but you not also again it's much more granular the message i think what he's saying is really there's no way around right bsv eventually yeah mm -hmm. right it's gonna, and we see yeah. the collapse of other ecosystems I mean, people who have criticized PSV, but they're still around because mm -hmm. they know their business model will not be better on Solana, right? It mm -hmm. will not be better on uh, Polygon. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you want to make it sustainable, it's, it's, it's a tricky situation. I get it, right? You might get easy funding if you're on Solana today. Please, you know, go ahead and get it. Um, but I think eventually you will come back. Maybe that's even good business strategy, an economic one. Um, Use but something think, that know, doesn't work and realize how good BSV is in comparison. And then yeah, we're, not even to about, yeah. we're not even talking about yet the intellectual property protection. I mm -hmm. mean, SPV, simplified yeah. payment verification, is a protected technology. Mm -hmm. No one does peer-to-peer no -peer right now. Peer-to-node-to-peer, -to -peer, yeah. right? We will be the only ones enabling it. Yeah. And then this is what really scaling is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to stand back and their mouths will fall open and they'll be like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Remember How when you told me and I didn't listen to you? Yeah, it could be that kind of thing as well, won't it? Yeah. I keep it always professional, right? I've got a lot of hate as well. Um, mm -hmm. But there's no point. Eventually people will realize. And I don't burn any bridges. And uh, I don't judge them either, right? They, they might be annoyed also by, by you speaking some truth. They might be whatever it is, right? But... Um, eventually people come back and this starts slowly and then steadily so i have a, a, a idea i just want to throw at you real quick um in that social bitcoin web thing we were doing with the group of people i was um suggesting that we start like a movement within the bsv community that gets everyone that is an enthusiast like us to record just a quick why you love BSV video and send that all into Bitcoin Association. If you can make it funny, make it funny or something, but get some kind of um, community marketing asset that we can use to share BSV, um, where all these people have their own little clip within, you know, 30 second to minute long thing or something. So um, if you have any thoughts on, you know, an in-house communication with you guys on getting a ball rolling of that kind of a marketing asset, um, you know, bringing the community together to do some kind of message that's preferably funny, that it could go really viral. Um, yeah, Look, that was goes. anything is on the table. Idea right? on getting a message out there collectively. So I'm personally a big fan of demonstrating. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, you know, judge me on my results. And I tell the same to our board, by the way. I'm creating the association or I'm, I'm building it in a way that's super robust. It's not dependent on me. They can let mm -hmm. me go tomorrow. And yeah. they should mm -hmm. if I'm not fulfilling my job. Mm -hmm. right. And so I'm confident enough that I bring value. And I think I got trust on the board now. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we need to stop um, being 
afraid of or, or not being proud of what we are what we have already created. I want people to be much more bold and go out and say, "Man, this is the best NFT solution because our NF, you know, our data is actually on chain, right?" Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, stop being comfortable just you know being second priority or not allowed on stage. So be, becoming much more bold and pushy and, and, a, and more an aggressive um, sales style. Mm -hmm. um, because the story is true, right? There's, there's nothing wrong about nothing to be shy about. Um, so I wish we can inject a bit more confidence into the ecosystem. I think that's a really good point because I think even in myself, I've noticed that I uh, don't engage with all the other people on all the other blockchains anymore. Like I don't follow them on Twitter. I don't really try and talk to them. And, and maybe that's a mistake, but you know, you have a lot of, you know, very aggressive confrontational conversations that eventually you stop bothering. But, um, you know, we need to, we, we've got probably a much stronger message, especially like, as you say, in crypto winter, like it, we're beginning to really shine through, like oh, a blockchain has to have a point. It has to do something, it has to work. Right. Um, and people maybe will start listening now. I so got on that. Go ahead, Kizzy. No, it's okay. I just I got on LinkedIn with a couple like seven, eight figure, nine figure earners. Um, I was not even intimidated by them at all because I knew the truth that I was coming with. And like these people, I'd be on a Zoom call with them, and and he reached out to me asking me, "How do you monetize influence <coughs> on the blockchain?" And I got about five minutes into my. Um, you know, explanation of BSV and the history of Bitcoin a little bit, um, giving my preface before I showed the platforms. And he just immediately checked out as soon as he heard about Craig Wright and all this stuff. But some of these people just straight hang up on you. But the, 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 the feeling within me to be able to interact with someone that is such a ultra high net worth individual. And I was just like, I don't even care. I'm not intimidated by you. It was a really great feeling. <laughs> I'm just going to say so. Um, to be able I to come with Bitcoin to that conversation, you know, whether when they're out there pushing their big Ethereum projects and whatnot, it's just, yeah. it, it, I mean, uh, you know, I'm inviting everyone to also use kind of us at BA, including myself or Mark Chin. I mean, anyone we've talked to so far, we are seeking conversations also with uh, parties mm -hmm. that clearly don't want to talk to us. And mm -hmm. once they meet us, there's no way they walk away and say, these are scammers. No way. Right? Yeah. Because we're not. We're like the super most professional. I mean, with my resume, I can I've had every job you can imagine. And mm -hmm. um you 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 know, we are nice guys, we are welcoming, um, we are professional, how we go about things. The association, I mean, is, is as professional as can get. We're audited, right? We are a, a registered mm -hmm. legal entity, we have a we have a board, we have uh, you know, policies, everything is like perfectly in order. And this is why also the exchanges we have started approaching the it was it was not difficult to convince them to actually onboard us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um there's a few who will never because of, of legacy of issues a lot of these exchanges as well are they people that actually did have bsv to start with and then stopped because a lot of them delisted didn't they there's a delist there was a delist campaign right and it's a few i think parties that you know Craig has maybe some personal beef, including the Coinbase guy that was after, right? Uh, Kraken, Binance, mm -hmm. obviously, FTX. But honestly, mm -hmm. they're also very related parties, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like a cartel a bit. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's others. And um, also, if I look at the quality of the companies, Bitrix is one example, super professional. Right, mm -hmm. they go. They look at the, at, at, you know, they look at it um, from a um, compliance perspective. They look at it from a business perspective, and then they charge. And you know, they are very welcoming. The same for Huobi, right? That was not difficult, mm -hmm. and we are not afraid of 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 um, going through any due diligence process. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so those they don't have, us, they just don't don't want PSV. Maybe also, you know, not they're afraid of you know giving it uh, room to grow. But mm -hmm. let me just tell you this. I think validation is a very important point. And this is also why I don't want BA anymore to go on stage and say how great BSV is. I mean, obviously, I'm, I, you know, I look like a biased person. Yeah. Um, but if a company goes out and says, look, we decided to build on BSV. And these are the reasons. It's much, powerful that the much more powerful message. So we validate each other's story. Mm -hmm. And um, just to give you a bit more, uh, a bit of a... A story from Dubai. I was having dinner with Latif Latif, this president of IPv6 forum and IEEE representative. 
Um, and we spoke about, you know, Craig, they obviously close now and they understand each other very well. They seem to be both visionaries. And um, I said, look, now that you kind of affiliate with Craig and the 10 conferences together, do you also get this, uh, you know, hate? And he was mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe, but it doesn't matter. He has been through this in the past. He said, look, when the founders of the internet came along, the enemy was much bigger. The enemy that censored and discredited them was the US government. And he said, that was bad. What mm -hmm. Craig is experiencing is nothing. So he's like super relaxed. And I said, so are you having a deja vu? I asked him and he said, hundred percent. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I can imagine that. a guy yeah. like him validating this, right, is uh, very comforting, let's say. It is very comforting, yeah. And so there's nothing to be, you know, ashamed of or worried about um, if you're speaking truth. Mm. Yeah. It will eventually prevail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, I, I find it amusing when people say to me, I love Satoshi. Well, Craig Satoshi knows not. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you knew Craig, you wouldn't love him. That's yeah, true. if you love Satoshi, you would love Craig, you know? It's like, oh, they don't, yeah. I, I do find it quite amusing when it's like, I love I've Satoshi. Had this, not I've had this since I was in preschool. Over and you shall know, and the, you truth. Shall know the truth, oh. and the truth shall make you free, yeah. I got this from my preschool. <laughs> my preschool Montessori teacher. I just I look at it all the time, and it it just it really resonates with me to with the Bitcoin story. There's so much freedom on the other side of the Bitcoin, you know, ecosystem for individuals and creators. So, and it does give you courage when you know that you what you're speaking is the truth, and you know you can demonstrate everything that you're saying. It does mm -hmm. give you courage. But you're right, we need to be a bit more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have to go all in. Yeah. And I've worked a lot with very successful entrepreneurs in the past. Again, I was in the kind of wealth structuring business, but I've learned one thing from them. They go 100% one direction. And if they mm -hmm. fail, they turn around and go 100% the other direction. But they always yeah. go 100%. They don't hesitate. Mm -hmm. And this is why they're successful. Well, they don't look at failure as failure. They look at it as feedback. On yeah. Up next. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you find a lot of the time though, when you're a new entrepreneur and you have an idea, it becomes an obsession and that's why you kind of, you know, you'll find that you're just 150 hours per week, just literally trying to get your, you know, your, your idea out there and fixed and, and then it does become an obsession. Yeah. It was uh, for me, Toronto, 2019. And the next day I had, I was thinking of working at the hedge fund. Um, I had a brunch with my colleague and we went there kind of, you know, as outsiders observing and learning. And I was like, shit, I mean, this is happening. And we either become part of it or we just let it pass by. Mm -hmm. So we decided both to leave. And, um, you know, here I am and don't regret a thing. I think it's mm -hmm. really stimulating and inspiring. And this is also when I started founding a business because I always want to commit myself. There needs to be something mm -hmm. at stake. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I always find excuses as well. Mm. So I founded a company right away together with my friend and we started looking at um, kind of BSV enabled business models and it's lasting until today, right? It's not my 100% uh, focus. There's a lot of other work now I do at the association, but um, it helped me tremendously to also understand where developers and some of the young entrepreneurs today come from. And I can have mm. conversations at equal level and I don't mm. come from the ivory tower and say, well, you know, I think at BA, you know, no, no, I'm at the same, yeah. facing the same problems as you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very much more relatable as well then. Yes. So look, um, I'm excited about the, the team now. I'm excited about the future. Um, we want to be again, open and accessible. We are, we are, we are, uh, welcoming any ideas. We are welcome any help as well. And, uh, I think you will see some uh, some great things um, coming up now. Last last point, let me just mention this, by the way. The, some of you might have attended the Dubai conference. No? Yes? Virtually. Attended okay. virtually. Yeah. yeah. But what, I, I mean, mean, I was <laughs> pumped after yeah. this. It was as exciting as, I think the best conference before this was London 2020. Yes. The one just before yeah. COVID yeah. hit yeah, us. We've been that one. As vibrant, more guests, 2,000 people or so. I mean, there were, you know, roles, there were government representatives. There was a huge booth area, which worked amazingly. Mm -hmm. um, 
So the next conference will be in May 23 in London. London will be the default location going forward. Yeah. And are you going to be there, Patrick? Are you going to be yeah, there? Yeah, look, absolutely, 100%. But I want this to be, again, a platform for ecosystem companies, meaning mm -hmm. it should okay. be a proper convention. If you think about yeah. concepts such as CES Las Vegas, mm -hmm. right? There is uh, speakers, panels, yeah, fine, on a stage, but there's side stages, right? Different mm -hmm. target audiences, developers, mm -hmm. miners, um, you know, Maybe there's a workshop by Mint Blue for auditing companies, a breakfast workshop, because the auditors, after you know the, the very interactive workshop, they might just go to work afterwards. Mm -hmm. There's people who don't want to stay for two, three, five days of a conference, right? So mm -hmm. it should be an engaging environment where ecosystem mm -hmm. companies are invited to actually you know, um, fill an element the way they think it's best for the target audience and make it their sales platform. It's not a BA kind of mm -hmm. led convention anymore that's my vision for it okay. perhaps we have a booth okay. well, yeah. yeah, I, I mean it could be a woman like, of ESV or like you know, a, a women. Yeah. Yeah. Say, sorry Patrick there could Say be a question for women element yes right? where you definitely. literally host your own uh, exclusive yeah. workshop people can require you know or a, a bid for an NFT before to, to enter your workshop 30 people yeah. only, highly interactive, sandwiches mm -hmm. provided. And then, you know, you're... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, completely. I mean, you know, the NFT goes. workshops, they would go down a tree, absolute tree. We could, I know, do, that. Uh, we could do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I definitely, 100%. And I say, we've already got merch. We can we can get, we can put on our little stand as well. Because, um, I mean, I don't know if you've spoken to Sir Toshi, who's in Leeds, but there is a digital festival in Leeds every year. And that would be a perfect place to actually, you know, just have a, a stand or something in, in this country. Because it is, I mean, the Leeds University is quite a good prominent oh, university. Gosh. There's a lot of young people up there. It's a great, great city. And it's a, a festival. And I think it lasts for a whole week. And like just this digital festival, so it'd be a perfect place as well to to do stuff. And he probably will be well. Oh, real. Sorry, that's Sorry. the trigger point for me. Anything goes. I loved it, but someone needs to own it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If someone comes forward, Satoshi, yourself, whoever says, "Look, mm. this is what we should do. This is the budget mm -hmm. we need." Right. Yeah. Mm. I'm sending you to the right person. We assess it. We assign you a sparing partner internally at BA. Mm -hmm. And then you go about it, right? You or you ready your own troops. We can help with that. If you say, "Look, I want to have five companies represented with me at this uh, booth," we help you mm -hmm. with the merchandise. We help you, uh, you know, finding the teams. We help with logistics. Like what else you need? And you do it as Diddy. Diddy hosts. You know. Thank you for being willing to help people that are all in 100%. with you guys. Um, yeah. So yeah, you that know what? there's a few there's a few things I, I feel that kind of um, controversial topics that have been in the, in the BSV space, including, I don't know, token protocols, back to Genesis problem. Mm -hmm. And they've always been discussed behind doors. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why, right? I want to have more public debates, not hostile, mm -hmm. just open debates because okay. we all want to learn. Yeah. And we don't know what the answer is, right? Mm -hmm. I guess we'll figure it out. There's opinions, but you know, no one has won yet. Yeah. There's no clear dominator as a token protocol. We have seen now, I think, a nice post by Jack Liu where he basically said, look, we have five different wallets with five different token standards. Yeah. I appreciate the competition, right? Yeah. But let's have, you know, let's debate this more openly. And I think uh, Women of BSV can also be such a forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a great time with the uh, thing with Craig the other day. Um, yeah, Rob and me. That. that was really mm -hmm. fun. So I love yeah. observing those kind of conversations. I mean, and I yeah. have spoken to Jack, and I work the next time I go and see because I've got friends down in in um, Plymouth. So the next time I go down there, I have said that I will get in touch with Joel because he's down there again, and I always pop and say hello to Joel, but also to Jack, who has promised me a tour around Exeter University. So that would be quite cool because I, like I as I said about the eternal student thing, I'm very into teaching. Or, or educating in the right way, if that makes sense, you know, about the right 
the systems etc so if we can do any well i mean me personally if i can do anything to help it within regards to that then i would definitely i've already offered my services you know so i used to teach as well so i have taught so at least then and yeah. being an actress i can definitely get on a stage and read a script out in fact one of the things i did want to ask you was because jimmy is such a great front man did you ever think about trying to get in touch with TED Talks and get him on a TED Talks? Because that would be a phenomenal platform for you to be able to have somebody like Jimmy, who is a perfect speaker, to be able to do. Even if it's only 10, 20 minutes, just to get him on a TED Talk stage would be that phenomenal. Would be cool. Good. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what Jimmy would think. but I, yeah, Jimmy. I don't think... At least as long as I've been here, I haven't uh, had this on my radar, but I took a note. Absolutely. I fully agree. Yeah, well, I know Robin has um, something to do with TED Talks. And also, um, it was, let me remember his name again, Speed of Sound. Who's it? Tom, 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 what was his? Oh, God, I do this a lot. I forget. What's his name? Abraham. The singer. No, no, he's a singer from the 80s, he's lying. Thomas Dolby. So Thomas Dolby has a book called The Speed of Sound. He is the first person, I've said this a few times, he's a sound engineer and he's a musician, but he's also a techno freak. He was the first person to invent the facility to be able to transfer sound packets over the internet. But he also started TED Talks. So he's somebody I really want to try and reach out to. He's a lecturer at one of the um, American universities. He would be an absolute perfect person. I have tried to reach out to him to ask him to come on the show, but I kind of we we are quite small. But somebody like yourself approaching somebody like him with your caliber and and everything behind you would probably be able to to actually get him to to you know to listen and have a conversation or at least be able to get jimmy on on to a ted talks yeah so that was one of my ideas as well it's a very good idea diddy yes well, when and we're trying to get kurt Wachit jr on joe rogan because joe rogan has 11 million followers now i found out recently that he i think he's a btc'er i really do um, so I wouldn't want somebody like it, like I wouldn't want Craig to go on something like Joe Rogan because I just no, yeah, and we should, we should, you know, some, somebody like a Kurt on Joe, Joe Rogan, yeah, but somebody like Kurt on Joe Rogan would be absolutely perfect. Now, I, I know that we've tried this a few times over the last year, and I know that there was at least 12 of us that did email Joe Rogan on his form to like a couple of times to see whether we could, but we've not heard anything back. So, difficult person to get in touch with, but again, a, a well, yeah. an approach from somebody like yourselves with the, the background that you've all got would actually probably stand more sway than somebody like myself trying to get them on there yeah but you know don't underestimate um we all you know individuals at the end of the day um mm -hmm. i think we can all contribute to this i definitely yeah i took a note we're gonna look at it but there's just you know a million of these ideas i'm getting every mm. week it seems yeah, no, yeah. it's just so low yeah. capacity so I, yeah but i do Part i do personally i do feel if you can get a ted talks you've got that's oh, yeah. That's a good audience Huge. just to get a message across too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. But you know, at the end of the day, we have done a lot of this talking, mm -hmm. but it goes back to how easy is it then to get going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, while everyone tries to, again, bring PA into the sales role, I'm feeling like we have to first make sure that the foundation is solid. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's tools missing. The, yeah. you know there's topics around scalability again light client spv this is a huge topic for us Identity. Um, and once this is in place i feel much more confident uh bringing everyone on board right yeah mm -hmm. i get you um, we don't yeah. we don't stop um there's a lot of discussions happening but i also mm -hmm. expect that the companies especially the larger ones in the ecosystem start taking be much more active in the business development role mm -hmm. There's minimum value of me and I'm attracting, I can tell you this, I'm attracting quite some companies and I, I, I allocate them then because mm -hmm. I appreciate these discussions as well. But then someone has to nurture these leads. 
mm -hmm. and has to pick them up. And it's not going yeah. to me to be me who, who provides a product or an MVP or you know proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, there's lots of good stuff going on, and uh, it's a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think having conversations seems to be the you know the upshot of it all. Yeah. Talk to many people if, all, all time. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Have right. many conversations, right? Be professional. Tell this unique story, and um, I feel like, especially in the enterprise world, I see a lot of people sitting on the fence. Mm -hmm. And um, look, I give you this example. Last year, Coinix Zurich, I, I I used the platform for myself. I extended tickets to all my friends who are highly valued and respect, mm -hmm. and said, look, even if you have contacts yourself that are professional and interested, you know, put them on my list on my guest list. So the, the CEO of one of the biggest Switzerland banks, Swiss banks, uh, private bank, was at Coinic. No one knew. I didn't even know him. Cool. So, you know, two weeks after Coinic, he texts me and he says, uh, hey, thank you for the ticket. I was like, I Googled him and I was like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then we had lunch. And ever since now, we're talking on WhatsApp. I mean, he's my contact now. Awesome. So That's already awesome. for me, in Zurich, this is highly valuable. Beyond BSD, yes. beyond BA. This is a relationship that brings you... Okay, and so what does he do now? He, he, uh, he became very interested. He gets it. Mm -hmm. So he had, he had this project manager in place that I've already talked before uh, to. And I told him, look, I think this project manager will not get you far. I've talked to him, right? I've kind of brought a lot of evidence forward. He's so fixed in his perspective, not open-minded. And now he replaced him. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, they, he called me and he said, look, can we actually meet Craig? And then there was a meeting with Craig as well. And in the meeting, also a board member of the bank popped in. They're all on the fence, right? They don't want to miss the boat either. Mm -hmm. They might not publicly go out and say, hey, guys, you know, we all uh, believe Craig is a Satoshi. That doesn't matter to them. But they no. want to make sure, first of all, you know, if an ultra high net worth person like Satoshi Makamoto literally walks around in Zurich, they want to make sure they know him, right? It's a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But secondly, they look at the tech and they want to make sure if they, they actually eventually work on a tech that works for them. Mm -hmm. So, but don't expect them to come forward and say, you know, all in on BSV. Why mm -hmm. would they do this? There's no upside for them at this point. No. Mm -hmm. no. no. But these conversations are happening. Yeah. And, and this, I mean, there's people like the banks as well. This isn't, I mean, this, you know, you can't just implement the system in a day, in a month, it's a, a no. very, very long process. It's going to take They a will long be the month. last, especially yeah. in Switzerland. I mean, they stand for stability, right? Mm -hmm. They're the last ones to implement any change. For years, they have been discussing core banking systems, and uh, mm -hmm. they're just hesitating. It's a bit like, you know, in a large company, when you are elected a CEO, um, you have probably a, a term of, what, four to eight years? You typically mm -hmm. look always to your next bonus, right? Meeting your KPIs. You don't want to make fundamental changes. Why would mm -hmm. you change the, let's say, you know, have a heart plant, transplantation, what is basically a, a, a core banking system change? Mm -hmm. um, but that would be somewhat a topic that is, you know, uh, linked to uh, digital assets and, and the tech as well. And by the way, one mm -hmm. of the first projects Craig implemented was a Bitcoin-based bank, right? Mm. I'm not sure if you if you if you remember it was called um ah oh, shit. We'll have to check now. Um lost it. But it's 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 public, right? When everyone can read about it. And I even saw the business plan of it once. That was one of his first ideas with the mm. protocol. So um anyway, long story short, they are they're observing. Um the easiest thing for them to do right now is just offer their clients access to digital assets. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Until the bubble pops. And then yeah. they start getting the complaints from the clients. Then they have to probably figure out how to explain that. But there's also teams that are observing what else can we do with it. And again, the story we tell is unique. Um, these contracts need to be nurtured. Um, and it needs um, qualified counterparties for them. They cannot just go to a small startup and say, look, we work with you now. They cannot, mm -hmm. right? They need partners mm -hmm. like PwC. A project with mm -hmm. them takes years. Mm -hmm. So... Um, our job should be rather educating now the the trusted advisors of these large enterprises if this is actually you know our focus mm -hmm. but here comes my personal opinion i don't think it is right now our focus is or my personal focus is those who are already delivering innovation and transactions on chain 
Yeah. Like fixed yeah. gaming. Yeah. If we bring transactions on chain, the economics on the chain get better. If mm -hmm. the economics are better, miners join. The, you know, it's more secure, mm -hmm. it's more profitable, and then price will follow, which will attract other, you know, entrepreneurs, companies, devs. Yeah. So it's all about increasing activity and uh, and 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 playing really the economics game on on uh, on Bitcoin. That's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Patrick, this has been an amazing conversation. It's so, it's so educational and eye-opening, and it's really nice to actually see the man behind the association. So I. I Thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else that you want to close out with before we uh, say goodbye? Look, I think some of the positive changes that the ecosystem has already observed are coming back to the same people that are uh, going to lead or steer the ship going forward. And um, as I said, we are open for business. We're welcoming everyone, all ideas, you know, all visions. And um, I think uh, it's gonna be, there are going to be exciting stuff uh, ahead of us. Fantastic. Oh, and on that note, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thanks for having me. Maybe one day we'll ask you to come back again. If you like this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Nice to meet you, Patrick.